Path controls are available from the string and path subpalettes. We see how we have a file path control and an indicator. If we were to choose a file path control, we place it down. The path control has two major features. The first is an area into which we can type a path, and the second is a folder icon, which allows us to navigate for a path with the standard operating system dialog box. For example, if we were to click on the folder right now, we see a standard open dialog box, which allows us to specify a path and a file name within that directory. This can be expanded, of course, to see the entire path. Further, there are a lot of options that we can adjust on the control. For example, if we were to right-click on it and choose Browse Options, we have the ability to choose whether the selection mode is for files or folders or either. We can also specify whether we're allowed to select only existing files or forced to create new files, also to choose either new or existing files. We can also specify custom prompt information. In the pattern label, we can say type of file. We can put a label to the type of file we want to open. We can provide a pattern, for example, restricting it to be only a certain type of file. And further, with the button text, we can specify and customize the behavior. Further, we can choose a starting path so that the browsing doesn't necessarily take place from the root directory. So if we apply these options and we again click on the folder icon, we see that it's automatically specified the type of file we want, given us our custom prompt, and customized the OK button. It's a very powerful feature which allows us to, within our programs, restrict the behavior of the file selection when we want to create or open data files. In addition to file path controls, there are also file path indicators. The difference, of course, being that file path indicators, because they are not meant to allow the user to provide an input, do not have the browsing capabilities within. And, of course, if we were to go to our block diagram, in our file I.O. section, there are also constants. So we have a file constant subpalette within our file I.O. functions palette. Here we have a variety of path constants. A path constant, the most basic one, is one where we can simply type in any particular path. And also if we right click on a constant, we have the ability to choose to browse for path, which will again bring up a, a standard operating system open dialog box, which allows us to pick a path or pick a directory. We can choose current folder to select the folder, choose save to select the selected file name, or choose new LLB to create a new LAVI library. And we see once we've done that, we get that file constant available there on the block diagram. There are a variety of other very useful file path constants available from the file constant subpalette. If we turn on our context help, we can browse, hover over them and see. See, we have an empty path constant, which returns an empty path, which can be useful when we want to build a path from scratch. Not a path constant, which returns an invalid path, which you can also use this in various comparison functions to determine whether a path is valid or not. Current VI's path tells the path of the current VI. VI library gives you the path of the VI library directory on your computer. These functions are useful for providing the ability to deal with relative paths. For example, if you're going to save a file in the same directory as your VI, it's much preferable to use the current VI's path as the starting point rather than a path such as C colon slash my VI slash etc. Because if you use the second type, which is otherwise known as an absolute path, then if the file was moved to a different location or run on a different computer, which may have a hard drive called D or E or some other letter, then all of your file saving wouldn't necessarily work correctly whereas using a relative path based on the current VI's path will always be correct. So in addition to the current VI's path and the VI library path, we also have a default directory, a temporary directory, and a default data directory. All these paths can be customized by editing the LabVIEW settings. Let's start with the current VI's path constant here. The next function we want to evaluate is how to actually deal with these paths. As mentioned previously, there's two key functions. Both of them are available from the file I.O. palette, and that is build path and strip path. You see that the build path takes as its input one path and one string. 
and performs the action of appending the string onto the end of the path. Second, the strip path function takes a path as its input and essentially strips off the last element, returning both the base path and that name. Let's proceed with an example now. Let's remove the path constant. Let's start with our path control and we'll connect that up to the strip path. We're going to create an indicator for the string. And we'll call it you selected this file. Next, we're going to take the base path, which comes out of the strip path function, and put that as the input to the build path function. Create a constant. We'll call this newfile.txt and connect up our path indicator. So if we observe what's going to happen here, we'll start with the path that we have browsed for. It will strip off the last element of that path, in other words, the file name, and put that in a string indicator. Next, it will provide the rest of that path, excluding the string, append newfile.txt, and place that in a new path. Let's return to our front panel. Just resize things a little bit so we'll be able to see the results. And run the VI. So we see this was our input path. This was the file we browsed for previously. It tells us we selected this file, which pulls off just the file name portion of the path, and then takes everything up to that point, which we see here, appends the file name newfile.txt to it, and builds a new path as a result. The final thing to discuss is the similarities between paths and strings. It may look very much like this path is just a string, and in fact when we pull off just one portion of it at a time, we of course get a string as a result. Those are the two outputs of the strip path function. In fact, it is possible to convert between strings and paths. Let's now take a look at some examples converting strings to and from paths. In the following example, we see that we have a path control on our front panel. Let's return to the block diagram and via the string palette, conversion sub palette, let's investigate both path to string and again from string conversion path to array of strings. Both of these functions perform the act of converting from paths to strings. In the first case, when we create an indicator, we see it's a simple scalar string. In the second case, when we create an indicator, we see that we get an array of strings. Let's expand both of these and resize the first. Now when we run this VI, we see that the conversion into the string appears very much like the path. The only difference is now that it's a pure string data type. And the second method, converting from path to array of strings, breaks the path into individual sections and returns each as a string. We again look at our conversion palette from string, conversion sub palette. We also have the reverse functions from array of strings to path, and again from string, conversion palette, string to path, both of which can be used to perform the exact opposite function as what we saw previously. If we were to create indicators for both of these path outputs, when we run the VI and resize our indicators, we see that in both cases we get our output equaling our input.